everyone, I'm Christina. And I'm Michelle, and today we'll be kicking off a really amazing series about some really interesting characters. Have you ever met anyone that you were really intrigued by or interested in? Yes, definitely. Um, I really like meeting people when I'm just out and about and making new friends. And this one day, I met this really interesting man named Ray. And some people might have judged him. He was actually homeless. He wasn't dressed very nicely. But him and I got to have coffee, and I learned that he was just a very brilliant, thoughtful person with this fascinating story, had so much faith, and I was very intrigued. And um, so he was someone who was a different character, but in a really positive way. Wow, that's amazing. You never know who you'll meet, right? Right. Well, today we're gonna learn about God and how he's different than anyone we know. Watch this. Hey, my name's Timmy. There was one time when I was at camp, and I love camp, but this time I just wasn't really enjoying it. During this week, I just had all these thoughts going on in my head of all these negative thoughts, things about other people, things about myself. And so I started asking God, I said, God, why? Do you let these parts of me stay? You know, I'm not helping anyone else. I'm not helping myself. And as I was thinking these things, I just had this thought. It's not that he loves this part of you that's nice to people, or this other part of you that judges people. It's just that he loves you. He loves all of you. And right at that moment, the worship team started playing this song, and the lyrics of the chorus go, you make beautiful things out of the dust. You make beautiful things out of us. And that moment was when I just felt God's love wash over me and it was this incredible moment and I just started bawling. There are so many ways to describe God because God is God. But when we look at who he is throughout his story, God is love. And that is today's big idea. God is love and his love is powerful. So let's rewind back to the beginning and take a look at Genesis chapter one, verse one. In the beginning, God. Before there was anything, there was God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So in the beginning, God created. So from here we learn that God is creative. He is all powerful. He took nothing and turned it into something. How cool is that? God created us in his own image, and God can see himself in us. But the difference between God and us is that he is perfect and holy and good. And let's be honest, we're not. God created people so that he could have a relationship with them. But then people sinned and sin created a barrier between us and God. But even though we have this barrier and God knows that we sin, he still keeps chasing after us and he still wants to be in a relationship with us. And even though we sin, God developed a rescue plan to help us because he loves us so much. So on to the beginning of God's family and God's people. God promised Abraham that he would have a family and that his family would turn into a huge nation. From the story of Abraham, we know that God comes through on his promises and that he is trustworthy. Through stories of Abraham's son, Isaac, and Abraham's grandson, Jacob, we learn more about God's continuing promise and how he just keeps trying to be in relationship with us. The Israelites continue to grow, but as they continue to grow, they think they can do it on their own and they fall into slavery. So then God develops a plan within his plan to help them out there, even though they ran away from him again and again. Let's try to imagine this. You're trying to cook in your kitchen and you're putting on the oven and you're doing something that's maybe not the safest way to go about it. So your parents, who love you very much, will come into the kitchen, they'll see what you're doing, and they'll give you a few helpful tips on how to cook safely and how to cook really, really tasty food. Make this leap with me. God wanted the same thing for his people. So he gave them rules, the Ten Commandments and other rules, so that his people could stay safe and that way God could have the best relationship with his people. But God's people also had the choice. They could follow the rules or they could not follow the rules. And when they didn't follow the rules, that would often lead to a lot of bad things happening. People got sick, people died, people got hurt. And even though it is so frustrating for parents when they know what is best and their kids don't listen, God still kept trying to be in a close relationship with us and kept trying to be close to us. And all of this is because God is love. His family gets to the promised land and they still choose to make some really big mistakes. So flash forward a few hundred years and God's plan starts to appear in the form of a little baby boy who was born to a woman named Mary. Do you know who the baby is? You got it, it's Jesus. Jesus grew up just like us, 
was taught by his parents, hung out with his friends, but we are told that Jesus is what God looks like. When we look at Jesus, we can see God. This is who God is, and we know that Jesus is loving and compassionate and merciful. And God's rescue plan was this. Jesus would teach as much as he could about God's way of life, show people what God's love was really like. Then Jesus would take all of the sin ever, yours, mine, everyone who's ever lived, and he would die on the cross like a criminal. So when we say God is love, the best picture we can paint of that is Jesus. And the great news is that when he died, he didn't stay dead. He conquered it and he came back to life. Let's check out Romans chapter eight, verses 38 to 39, and let's see what the Apostle Paul has to say about God's love. I am absolutely sure that not even death or life can separate us from God's love. Not even angels or demons, the present or the future, or any powers can separate us. Not even the highest places or the lowest or anything else in all creation can separate us. Nothing at all can ever separate us from God's love. That's because of what Christ Jesus, our Lord, has done. God is love and his love is powerful. It's crazy when we try to wrap our minds around this because there's nothing that we could ever do to make God love us any more and there's nothing we could ever do to make him love us any less. Cool, thanks for joining me. I will see you next week. How many times can you say the key verse before the photo is taken? Say it with me. I am absolutely sure that not even death or life can separate us from God's love. Romans 8 verse 38. Get ready. Three, two, one, go. That verse from Romans is so powerful. Neither death nor life can separate us from God's love. And it's great because it lets us know that no matter what we do, God will always be there for us and he'll always love us. For sure. Now this month we have something a little bit different, a little bit special. We're following students who attended TMHU. What's TMHU? It actually stands for the Meeting House University, and it's like a real university where kids and youth go to learn about God from Dr. Jamie Robertson. Now they can ask questions on all sorts of topics. Let's see how he answers them. Check this out. Hey everyone, how you doing? Good. Good. Let me start by asking you a question. Have any of you ever wondered how old God is? Yes. No, not yeah. really. Okay, it's a bit of a tricky one. So I'm going to hold this up. Can anybody tell me what shape this is? It's a circle. Don't worry about hands. Let's just talk. Circle. circle. All right, where does the circle start? Where does the circle end? Can anybody tell me? Anywhere. Anywhere. Can you see a spot? No. Nope. All right, now if I draw a circle, or kind of a circle. Can you tell where it started and where it ended? Yeah. Start, end, right? This is kind of how we understand how old God is. The circle has, that we can see, no beginning and no end. So you know what? For a long, long, for many, many years, the Jewish people and then the Christians have always said that God has no beginning, has no end, is so old, is beyond age, is eternal, <laughs> forever. And then later on, they're going to come up with another What's that? Alphabet. The alphabet. Right. A to Z. Is this, where is this, at the beginning or the end of the alphabet? Beginning. 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 Yeah. The, very good. In the Greek, they don't have Z, it's called the Omega. And they would call Jesus the Alpha and the Omega, meaning that he's everything. Did you know this? Some of you got books. There's a book there that every book you have read or will read is made up of some combination of these letters. Everything you know comes from these 26 letters. So God is so old, so ancient, that we actually think he has no beginning, has no end, is eternal. 
Is God one person or what is the three thing? So as Christians, we have this thing. Have you, any of you ever heard the word Trinity? Okay, it's actually, that's actually two words. Try unity and try, what, what can I, try is for three, like try, triangle. So now you understand. So what's the common thing about doing a three. three, but it's also one thing, isn't it? Yes. So that's how we start explaining this. A tricycle has three wheels, but it's one bike, right? Some people have, have used the egg as an analogy. You guys know what an egg is? Do you have yes. scrambled eggs for breakfast? So an egg is one thing, but it's also, it's a shell. It's the yellow stuff inside. What's that called? Yolk. 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 And it's the white stuff. What's that called? Egg. Egg. Nice. Wait, so the white part of an egg is called an egg white? <laughs> I probably should have known that. Because it's three things, but it's one. But that kind of doesn't work. So we're going to use a circle. Some people have explained that God is not just one, but it's three. And that's confusing, right? Here's what I want to say. We've got God the Dad, God the Son, God the Spirit. You know what God really is? God is a family. A perfect, loving family where everybody is their own, but everybody loves and does things together. So when the Spirit is in you, you have God the Dad and God the Son. So when we talk about, this is a great question, Rowan, when we talk about three and one, what I want you to think of is God is family. And because they love each other so much, that love pours out and invites us to also be part of that family. Can God create a rock so big he can't lift it? Oh, that's a classic philosophical question. Do you all understand the point behind that question? Yeah. If God can do everything, then he should be able to create a rock so big that even he can't lift it. But hang on. If he can't lift it, then he can't do everything. There's lots of stuff that God doesn't do, that God can't do, that I want you to take comfort in. You know what God can't do and won't do? Lie. You know what God can't do and won't do? Stop loving you. Those are the things that God cannot do. God can't stop loving me. Next question. How can God hear us all praying at the same time? Okay, everybody on the count of three, say your name. One, two, three. Yes. What? And if God was just up there with big, big human ears, right? It'd just be noise. What the New Testament teaches us, what the Holy Spirit gives to us, is a realization that God lives where? In our heart. In our heart. So, now, I ask you, can you hear your own thoughts? Uh, yeah. Sometimes. Can you hear your own voice even if other people are... If you're in a classroom and everybody's talking and there's a big boring teacher at the front, can sometimes your brain kind of go, I wish I was here, and then before you know it, 10 minutes have gone by? Has that ever happened to you? It's pretty easy, even in a crowd, even in a noise, to hear yourself. That, my dear, is how God hears our prayers. Your voice is louder to God than all the noise in the world. But here's the cool thing. It's also in here, and he hears my prayers. And this is what makes us family, too. Why did God make people? And why doesn't he just make everybody do the right thing all the time? Are you saying that we do wrong things? Are you guys saying that we make mistakes? You make mistakes? Yeah. Yep. Me too. Me too? Are you sure? Yeah. Everybody I think you are. Every, perfect. Everybody makes mistakes and nobody's perfect. So why would God make us? Well, here's the short answer. I don't know. The only thing I could think of, and remember back to Rowan's question, is remember how we talked about how God is really actually a family? And something about family, something about love, makes us creative. Love creates life. Love makes God dwell within us. Love has made God a family. So why did God make people? The only answer I got is love. Why doesn't he make us do all the right things all the time? I don't think he wants robots. I think he wants actual people. Because God is a family that loves, and you know what love wants? More love. Thank you. Great questions. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you again soon. Bye. 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 That's interesting. I also wondered why God didn't just make us perfect and make us do whatever he wanted us to do. Yeah, I've thought that too, but I really liked what Jamie said about, you know, God being love and he really just wants relationship with us. And if we couldn't make any of our own choices, we'd just be like robots and that's not love and it's not authentic. I want to be in Jamie's class. I have some questions for him. Well, he'll be back next week, so maybe your questions can be answered then. Awesome, but for now, let's break into small groups and see how this will affect our lives.